Hey everyone, Bizkit again, and today we're going to be taking a look at the God of All Gunpla. No, not really. The GOG is a Xeonic Amphibious mobile suit from the original Gundam series, Mobile Suit Gundam, and it is primarily used... I don't know, I think it only appeared like one, once or twice in the series. Um, not exactly used all that often, especially since this is kind of just a glorified prototype of the much more popular Zagok, uh, stemming from the name Gog. Uh, but, yeah, um, that's kind of just the general briefing of this guy. Um, for such an obscure mobile suit, I'm actually surprised it even got an HGUC at all. Um, I, it's, it's, it, genu it generally blows my mind, especially since this thing isn't actually the worst in the world. Especially in terms of color separation. Speaking of separation, oh no. <laughs> but in terms of color separation and even articulation, this guy's actually pretty good. Uh, so let's move right on into, uh, I, I don't know, something. Okay, I've decided we're going to talk about the color. Uh, let's start off with actually the stickers you come with. You only get two, uh, that being these two right here, and from the shape of them, you've guessed it, they're for uh, this right here. Now, uh, something interesting about the head, let's pop that off here. Uh, it's actually tan, um, beneath the same tan as the body, since this thing doesn't exactly have much of an inner frame. Uh, could have molded it with this color, but it probably wouldn't have looked right. So they just gave you a black sticker, and judging by... Whoop, Come on, get back on. There we go. And judging by the pink sticker right there, yep, the Mono Eyes sticker. Really is a bit of a shame that we don't get a moving one, but this was, what, like number eight of the HGUC line? I can't fault it too hard for that. Um, especially since it would have been kind of difficult to get that little thing to move around. As for colors you will need to paint, let's take a look at the, this here manual. So... Uh, we have two little gray things at the side of these, uh, I think these are cannons, megaparticle cannons, uh, which you can very easily do, as you can see here. I just filled these in with a pencil, nothing too special, um, and the little circles at the inside of these, I think they're cannons, those need to be painted white, and the inner frame, or inner frame that this thing has is molded in the completely wrong color. It's actually molded in this blue when in fact it should be the same gray as the knees and feet, uh, but not the worst thing ever. Backpack thrusters don't need anything. Um, bottoms of the feet right here, those are going to require some silver. Uh, and some of the final things you need to paint would be red on the inside of these here thrusters between the legs, I don't know. Um, and yeah, that's really about it. Oh yeah, and the same kind of blackish that's the same as the feet for this here. Overall, this thing is actually very color accurate, and what's not color accurate uh, isn't actually the biggest uh, issue in the world. So let's move on to something else, I don't know. All right, let's talk about accessories. And now onto the articulation, starting from the head down, of course. Uh, the head is actually on a ball joint, so you can get some movement. However, it is very loose, and it will push it up and off if you rotate it too much. Um, so do be careful of that. However, it does rotate around just a bit. Uh, barely moves up and down. I wouldn't even count that. Uh, shoulders are just clipped on like so, uh, so they can turn around, whoops, ever so, oh, come on, ever so independently. Now, shoulders themselves are on ball joints, will turn all the way around, move out about that far, uh, and each of these segments right here are ball joints connected to pegs, so you can get some very flexed out motion and swivel each and every one of these individual segments. The hand is on a hinge joint, can also rotate around uh, because of this, and each of the fingers are on ball jointed segments, can completely close up and spread out, which is really nice. Uh, the waist uh, can turn all the way around, kind of. You will need to pull that up just a little bit uh, to get that to work. 
and it goes up and down ever so slightly. Now the legs, and before I'm gonna do the articulation, do be careful that you don't break the joint if you're gonna disassemble this. I did, uh, cause it's on a very thin bit of plastic to the ball joint. So that's gonna be very easy to break. And as you just saw, I did with mine. So the legs will move up about that far, not too far out because of the huge iron diaper that it's wearing and out uh, about that far. Leg will move sideways. Yeah, not too, too much. Uh, rotation, not a ton, but it's uh, fine, I guess. You have, ooh. You have a double jointed bend, but that's gonna come undone so much. I wouldn't even recommend doing the double joint. Also, it's mostly this bottom joint that's gonna do the work. That's about the bend you're gonna get. But this top joint up here, it does next to nothing. Um, also, it is extremely loose. Uh, I want you all to witness as I put it back and set down the thing. All right. Maybe you didn't see it. Let's try that again. Come on. Don't make a... Yeah. That top joint is not very strong at all. Once you find the sweet spot, it will stay. Um, and it will always stay if you lean it forward awkwardly. But, ooh, yeah. That's not going to do too much for you. The feet themselves um, are also on ball joints. So they can pivot. And they can't really turn around all that much. However, they can go up really nicely and backwards really nicely. Um, that's it for articulation on this guy. And actually, it's not bad uh, for what it is. Uh, of course, like, there's not exactly a ton you're going to get out of this guy, but it's not a very action-packed thing. But it is action-packed. Uh, we're going to get to right now. So this is a bit of a transformation that this guy has, which is pretty cool. The instructions refer to it as a... We're going to call it the diving mode. And it's actually very simple to do. Uh, this is apparently the mode it's going to be when it's underwater. So let's get this guy completely transformed into that. And here we have it in its alternate mode. Uh, not too much has changed. You really just uh, take off the hands and put them out and put them on a different place. You don't even have anything to do with the arms afterwards, so I don't really know what the point of that was. Still a pretty cool feature. Apparently, these arms are supposed to fold in, but I don't even see how Bandai could do that with today's ooh modern technology. Uh, but yeah, that's really it for this review. Uh, not a ton going on with this little guy. I can definitely see the appeal and charm that some people would want for getting this. Uh, I got it just because it's kind of goofy looking. Um, but yeah, uh, kind of fun. Um, I would rate this uh, seven green paint buckets out of five red buckets. Yeah. Something I forgot to mention. You don't get these decals with it.